I get a lot of questions about Scandinavia. And this, the essence of the question is this. How come these countries have such high taxes, uh, huge welfare states, and yet uh, their economies do pretty well? And, you know, the people describe them as some of the best places to live on Earth, you know. So let me just take the last thing. You know, I don't know how those places can be the best place to live on Earth. Have you ever, do you know how cold it gets there in the winter? You know, I think if they came just for a little bit to Southern California, they'd realize that Scandinavia is not one of the best places to live on Earth. Anyway, put that aside. Um, how do we, how do we, you know, we claim that freedom is necessary for economic growth, and yet, so first of all, let's be clear. The difference between Scandinavian economies and taxes, in regulation, in welfare state, and the U.S. is nowhere near as big as you think. The United States is very similar today in Scandinavia in terms of the amount of redistribution that happens, in terms of the level of taxation, and in terms of the level of regulation. One could argue even that America regulates far more than do these other countries. So take a country like Denmark. Denmark regulates its financial institutions less than America regulates its financial institutions. Okay? So it's not clear here that Scandinavian economies are less, are dramatically less free than an American economy. Indeed, if you look at uh, the surveys that they do, uh, these rankings that they do of, the, of economic freedom, Denmark, for example, is listed as more economically free than the United States in at least uh, the two major surveys here, in the, the Heritage uh, Economic Freedom Index and in the Fraser Institute Economic Freedom Index. Uh, Denmark is ranked higher than the United States because they regulate less, significantly less. And the redistribution is not that, that much greater than the, in the United States. But it's also true that to the extent that they have high taxes, to the extent that they redistribute wealth, to, the, to those extents, these countries suffer. Their economies don't do that well. Take Sweden for an example. Now, Sweden's an interesting, interesting example. Before the 1960s, Sweden was one of the freest economies in the world. It had a thriving capitalist industrial base. It created massive amounts of wealth. It had a relatively free economy, low taxes, low regulations, and it boomed. And the amount of wealth created was astronomical, and Sweden became a real industrial powerhouse. As a consequence, a huge amount of wealth was created which starting in the 1960s, because of socialist policies, Sweden started to redistribute. But it started at a very high point, and it redistributed all the wealth that was created and continued somewhat to be created under socialism, but economic growth slowed significantly. The redistribution cost Sweden a lot, wealth creation halted, and what they were redistributing was wealth that had already been created in the past. By the mid-1990s, Sweden was in grave economic problems because it couldn't continue redistributing wealth that it wasn't creating. What happened? And, and of course, that kind of economy also suppresses innovation, suppresses entrepreneurship, suppresses people using their mind, people being free, people you know, doing what's necessary to have a thriving economy. And you saw people leaving Sweden to free up places uh, for tax reasons, I remember Johan Borg, ABBA, you know, looked for places where they would pay less taxes. And you also saw entrepreneurs leave, go to other countries where they could be entrepreneurial and benefit from it versus Sweden. So in 1994, Sweden started changing. It started reducing regulation. It started reducing government spending. It started reforming its welfare programs. And it started, in, in, in essence, shrinking its government. And it's been doing that for the last, you know, 20 years, a little under 20 years. As a consequence, the Swedish economy started growing again. Wealth creation started reigniting. You've got a decent economy in Sweden. It's not thriving. It's not through the roof. It's not back to what it, it it's not to where it would be if, if, if Sweden was truly free. It's doing better, right? So um, these countries, uh, you know, America is not as free as you think it is. It's far less free than you think it is, particularly on the regulatory front. And these countries are not un as unfree as you think they are. They're not. Indeed, a country like Sweden is moving in the other direction, is moving towards more freedom, not less. 
Take Norway. The reason Norway has such a high standard of living and the economy is doing well is because they've discovered oil. It's a small population. The government gets huge royalties on the static natural resources called oil, which they distributed to the citizens. Are Norwegians happy? I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical the people who are not productive, who are not innovative, who are not working hard are happy just because they get a check. Norwegians get checks from the government because of the oil. Is life okay? Yeah, but it's pretty static. It's pretty boring. It's so Norway is doing well because of oil. For the same reason, by the way, in the Middle East they're doing well in spite of having awful economies. Denmark is, is, uh, is, is doing well because they're less regulated than the United States. They're more economically free in spite of having ridiculously high taxes. Now, let me note that all these countries are in trouble long term. All these countries have social welfare programs that are not sustainable long term. So even Sweden, as it's reduced its welfare programs, still, even at current levels, they're not sustainable. And the United States, of course, has a redistributive regulatory state that's not sustainable long term. So all of these countries will suffer the consequences long term. But remember, again, remember, Scandinavia is not that different than the United States. And the United States is less free than you think. They're, is less, they're, not, they're more free than you think. And the world generally, Europe and the United States, are coming, coming together in this uh, mediocre, mixed economy place of very little economic growth, very little progress. Uh, and it's a scary place given the liabilities that those economies have taken on in, in the future. So there will be a day of reckoning for all these mixed economies. It's just a question of when.